All right, man, what's up, man? It's your boy. Don't need to die, nigga. You see what I'm saying? Repping for my, uh, uh, H.I.P. Coke Dog, the general. As you already know. As you know, nigga, day one. Used to slide together every day on missions, money. Nigga sent the fizz ass in, trying to knock niggas down. We didn't have to play the 05 and shit. You know, we brought the homie back, nigga, stay solid. Some of the folks on the inside snitching. You see what I'm saying? For paperwork and they freedom. Some was, uh, what, giving the snitches passes because, quote unquote, who they are. So if that's the case, everybody gonna play this game. Nobody gonna be going nowhere. But uh, we on from that. Talking about this real shit that's going on, man. All this fucking division amongst our people. All this fucking hate. And you niggas is playing into it. Everybody's just like feeding on it. So don't think I'm just new getting into this game. Look at my pages. I got probably um, seven. I think I got seven or ten. Seven or ten pages and shit. So I was an artist first. So, you know, I got the pages and shit. Nigga was an artist first. So nigga was uh, tapping in here and there. And I, put my, I used to put my content on Facebook. A lot of it is blocked from the public and shit. Because it was family shit. Niggas just decided, bet we going to do something else. And it ain't for everybody to see. You see what I'm saying? This one ain't got that many uh, subscribers. Some of the other ones got mm, about 100 and something. That's not a lot, really, and shit. Because nigga wasn't really on this all the time, full time. This wasn't the mission. You see what I'm saying? But niggas always talked about, eh, we got to get back into this and do some, some streaming podcasting, whatever niggas want to call it and shit. That's a lot of bullshit. But now it's getting to the point, man, niggas is turning this into a game. And it's been a lot of lies and shit going on out there about who did what. Niggas getting each other killed. Niggas talking about snitching, quote unquote. Not knowing if you even uh, tell my bitch who I'm fucking, that's snitching. If a motherfucker, you said I'm saying, nigga, that's snitching. Especially you telling one of your folks. If a nigga even go tell my mama as a kid, um, Doom broke that window or Doom the one did that snitching. You ain't got to just be snitching talking about the police. That nigga, civil cases ain't snitching. You said I'm saying civil case is civil case, period. You get hit by a car, you, you're not going to sue the motherfuckers to get your money. And if you do, all of a sudden they're going to say, I mean, for what niggas putting it down, oh, nigga, you snitching on the insurance company or the car that hit you. Come on, man. Police shoot a motherfucker up. Police tried to kill me when um, I had that high-speed chase in 01 after, um, a little bit after a nigga came back from up the hill from that shit after I saved the game in the, um, the Sherwoods. Um, they tried to kill me March 01. I fought life. Yeah, I kicked the police car window out from the back seat and all that shit. That was after the September 11th shit. You know, that just passed from 2000. So they was wearing the fucking flags. So, yeah, I was mad because, you know, what they did. And one of my folks, the one, wasn't really one of my folks. It was a bitch I was fucking with. Her mama told the police I'm riding around with sticks looking for the police. They tried to kill me and shit. Had a high-speed chase. I got on. And my car was registered right there on 57 between Vermont and Hoover. You see what I'm saying? But I lived over an hour, almost two hours away from there. So I'm thinking I get out, bell on foot. Nigga, they going to be looking for me over there. But the bitch mama, who I let stay in my motherfucking uh, apartment over in Long Beach, was the lead car when they came and got me. I'm like, how in the fuck would the police know to come get me here? That's all that division. Niggas trying to knock each other the fuck down. But um, going from that shit right there. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, police tried to kill me and shit. You know, after they fucked me up, after they caught me, put me in the back seat, I'm handcuffed. Now they trying to fuck me up. So I'm telling these bitch ass niggas, take the cuffs off and nigga, let's do this shit, nigga. And I'm like, y'all nigga want to see me, nigga. So after they get me in the back seat, you know, they talking shit, shut the door. So I lay down. Boom. I blast the motherfucking window. And I hit the, I hit underneath the window the first time at the bottom of the, I mean, the top of the door. And it buckled that motherfucker like, boom. 
Then the second one, boom, I hit that mother. I slid damn near all the way out to my ass. I had to slide myself back in and shit. And uh, sergeant come over there. Now I didn't know. No, when I blasted, then I yelled out. When I slid myself back in, fuck America. You know, yeah, nigga, I was mad as a motherfucker. So I want to taunt they ass. That's what that was about. I'm taunting these motherfuckers. Sergeant come over there. You know, we chopping it up. It's, it's cool. So, you know, I'm talking. So I had to take a deep breath. And this motherfucker, a deputy, um, black deputy, like he said, I've seen him 2016. It was only two black deputies in the area at the time. And he remembered the incident. So when I inhaled, took that deep breath, that nigga stuck the pepper spray in my motherfucking mouth. Like, put it in my mouth like a motherfucker put a gun in your mouth while I'm in, ex, inhaling. But you know you got a little lock button. You can turn it on lock like some of them lighters and some you push the button and push that lock. He had it on lock, just spraying. And I was inhaling. Shit got to coming out my nose, all that shit. Yeah, they killed me for a minute. I died. I flatlined. No nothing. Then, um... I heard, I can hear a little talking and sound like, like faint voices and shit, all that. But in the end, motherfuckers sue these motherfuckers. I didn't sue them though, because they ain't, they ain't let me get a chance to even do none of that. But, uh, you know, flatline for a minute. Then um, when I fell over in the back seat of the car after I stopped breathing, no, no hearing, no sounds, I... Seen that little white shit. Looked like somebody poured white paint over my eyes. It's the last shit I seen. And that white light. And I'm thinking, oh, that shit, you know how people know. Oh, yeah. I seen the white light. But then that was it. Next day, you know, I'm on the floor of the police car. Hands behind my back, laying in vomit. So when I fell out the car, I mean, I fell out the seat. Where that drive shaft go in the middle. I guess that pumped my stomach. Boom. I start to throwing up, breathing and shit. Um, there was only one police I did here before, nigga, uh, flatline. Said, get him out, he's not breathing. And then the other ones was like, fuck it, leave him in there, let's just see what happened. But then motherfuckers call themselves police. My people call ourselves our people. Our people wasn't even fight. get him out, y'all gonna let him die, none of that. You see what I'm saying? And the police supposed to be for the people. Motherfuckers are straight murderers. You see what I'm saying? If I could have got a chance to sue them, hell yeah, I would have sued the fuck out of them. But what they did was, took me from there. Um, they didn't want me to go to the hospital. He don't need a hospital. Just, uh, he's still breathing now. He back breathing. Um, take him to the back, hit him with the water hose, and, and take him down to the jail, put him in a rubber room. So they put me in a rubber room and shit. I mean, the floors is rubber walls and shit like that. First they took me in a little thing. With the uh them little things out the sink with the water run, rinse my eyes and shit, and uh my face. Then put me in a rubber room and shit. But um if I could have sued him, I would have sued him. Now, you know, y'all, 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 y'all niggas is so fucked up, homie. We sitting out here warring with each other about everything. Nothing one niggas feel like, oh, I gotta be better than the next nigga. Us one nigga, if you better than the next nigga. You got more, we still ain't shit, nigga. Because we ain't bigger as a race than the next race. Or we ain't even in competition with them niggas. And like I say, niggas was talking about, oh, it happens in the white community. It happens here and there. Nothing like what we do, nigga. Even if it's the mass shootings. And some of them ain't making theirs count, nigga. They got a reason sometimes, nigga. I know for sure. And I, got, I had life at 15. You said I'm saying that was for my 25th birthday, life in the California Youth Authority. Well, we talked about that on another one. But what I'm saying is I've been locked up with all kind of motherfuckers. Man, I had to go to counseling. They wanted to put me in a mental institution. All that shit, because I was the crazy, fucked up, mad motherfucker. Especially after my sister died at 24. The day she, on her next visit, she just visited me and she was coming back. We had family nights. We get those, I think, once a year when I was in Nellis and she was supposed to come that night. They killed her at the hospital, faked the autopsy and shit. You see what I'm saying? And found out through uh, General Hospital when they did the autopsy and said, Sentinel Hospital in Inglewood, 
fake the autopsy and shit. But um, what I'm saying is, our folks, we don't fight for nobody. We only fight against each other. Well, it's like they say, oh, when the police kill a motherfucker, they get out there and march, we shall overcome all that bullshit, fuck the police, and then go right back to killing each other. Working for the motherfuckers. Y'all niggas be working for the police. Regardless of what niggas say, I ain't working. Niggas know, nigga, you're working. Even you know. Even the next time niggas say, if the people don't know I'm working, they ain't working. Nigga, you know you working, nigga. I, I, every one of my convictions, somebody, only convictions they got out of me was people that I was dealing with. Ain't all from the set, no. Everyone was somebody I was dealing with. Some motherfuckers be want to see you gone just so they can outshine you. But if you want that shine that much, nigga, niggas need to come together and try to outshine, get in the, in the, in, 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 in the light spectrum. Our ambient light just not there, nigga. So niggas want to go online, niggas doing music, all talking about hate, kill each other. Then when niggas come, kill motherfucker. Then motherfuckers crying about that. You kill my son. You kill my daughter. All that. Nigga, stop your folks from getting killed. Stop your folks from running their motherfucking miles and shit. Real talk. Then nigga, y'all niggas see this shit going on. Work with niggas, like I said, with the game. Nigga, game one from Hoover. Regardless, they say his mama, you know, was claiming the set. You said I'm saying me and game about the same age. So, and I hadn't even heard of that shit. I didn't know he was, he wasn't even in the game at the time. I just be in the shirt woods all the time. We was just out there. The set was in, was, was in Bellflower. You feel what I'm saying? We used to fuck with the 706s and all the Compton niggas. From the Compton Pie Rules to the different Compton Crip niggas used to be through that. Month. Everybody was in Bellflower. That's one thing I didn't like about it. It was mixed up. Niggas was fucking with each other. But then I heard some shit. Some bitches running their mouth. Talking about game was running his mouth at, at, at Sims Park. And um talking about how much weed and shit he got and this and that. And bitches talking about they gonna rob him. So I was like, why the fuck would y'all wanna rob a nigga for some fucking weed? Now nah, because he acting like he all that. Why everybody playing basketball? I think I don't know if it was a Sunday. Um but they was like he, you know, he put out some some bags of weed and shit on the court, and you know said he got this and that, even though he was um uh, working for his, his his brother cousin I don't know if face was his brother cousin um was a ghost face something like that. But I know me and him used to you know have words here and there because you know he used to fuck with the homie. Uh, they used to try to trip on the homie midnight and shit. So one day I'm sliding through the parking lot. I had my 77 colors at the time. And when I first ran into face them, this was uh, like 97, 98, somewhere in there. 97, 98. Yeah. So, you know, but then, you know, it was cool. Because niggas all over there, everybody network. Niggas getting money. That's what it was about. That's what I liked it about it. Especially after being in jail. Jail don't bother a motherfucker. But what it is is... We in jail, we networking, we homies, we stand side by side. You see what I'm saying? Put our backs against the wall, back to back. And then niggas come home and go, and, and it's just all fucked up. And it make, make it seem like the white people theory, and they push that on the other folks. They better in jail. They get along better in here. That's because niggas is stupid. Niggas get out here competing with each other. Nigga, my car is going to be better than his. Nigga, my bitch. And, nigga, come on, my nigga can... Us, as a people, be better than them, our, our oppressors? Niggas say, no, it ain't the white folks' fault. Nigga, no, they, no, they put it in motion, and they roll the ball down the hill, and it just go. Or, it's better better yet said like this. They get the tire from a tractor trailer doing about 60, 70, and let it come off the car. You've seen the destruction it do when it hits shit. It's going to keep going until it can't stop. Well, it's going to keep going into something. Make it stop. But that motherfucker is, is, is destruction by itself. Just from one of the wheels. From one of the motherfuckers. And that's what they do. They get us in motion and release us. So now everything is working like an algorithm. Automatic pilot. We just fucked up. Niggas, so much hate and fucking jealousy. 
That nigga whoop whoop making them songs. Like, fuck that nigga. I'll kill that nigga. And whoop whoop whoop. It's like they said, nigga. You don't hear no rock and roll singers beefing with each other. You don't hear no fucking bluegrass singers beefing with each other. R&B, gospel. And there's probably many other uh, country, western, whatever. They all probably saying, we'll give a fuck. That's not my concern. My thing is, these motherfuckers ain't out there warring and beefing with each other. And then, this is how you know they want to shut niggas down. All right, like you say, they tell someone, you too old to be trying to rap. Oh, nigga, oh, 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 oh. Niggas is out there trying to disrespect motherfuckers. They calling, um, uh, uh, what's his name? King Yellow Old. How is that nigga old? He 32 years motherfucking old. How in the fuck is 32 old? This bitch online, I heard it the other day. You see what I'm saying? No, I'm going to say that because you want the motherfuckers that sit up there with motherfuckers and try to tear niggas down. How that is 32 old? So if 32 old, 25 is the old two then now. Because that's less than 10 years away. You see what I'm saying? That's less than 10. Um, 50 is the middle. It's middle, middle age. <clears throat> These dumb motherfuckers don't even know nothing about middle age no more. When a nigga get 50, then we'll be middle age. And then once we pass 50, we still gonna be middle age until we get 65, 70. That's when motherfuckers be coming to senior. That's when you're starting to get old. Man, this motherfuckers right around here, 100 years old. Now they old. I don't want to say, but that's super old. Uh, you're just a super loser. He's a super dumb motherfucker. And to keep it 100, a lot of that old shit came in play from jealous motherfuckers and haters. Haters. And then um, when they came with the LGBT community and shit too, real talk, because I heard it being spoke on when motherfuckers say, oh, you know, the gay shit that. And they say, oh, that's the old way of thinking. So now they saying, okay, let's, Let's make these other motherfuckers irrelevant. Let's 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 say they their opinion don't matter. But then at the same time, you motherfuckers is heads over heel for Donald Trump. Now that's an old motherfucker. Donald Trump had shit towers and shit. The Trump towers even before I was born. But y'all don't say he's too old to be in office. The Supreme Court, superior, not the Superior Court, the Supreme Courts, all them motherfuckers is basically old. But why? Because you have to go through so much experience, so much, get so, accumulate so much motherfucking knowledge before you can even be thought about getting in that seat. I'm talking to the homie a little while ago. He was like, yeah, they need to get out the way and let us. Let us do what? Keep fucking up? Niggas can't even do good as own black people. Let us younger motherfuckers. Like, okay, you put me in the superior course. And yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pretty smart. I'm the founder of the um, youth and college chapter of the NAACP. You see what I'm saying? I went from being a straight fuck up, a lifer, and fought life, um, I think, yeah, three times since. Oh, one. Shit, well, yeah, since 01. And I fought life in 01. Fought life 2016. And again, on some other shit that my own motherfucking son mixed me in. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to help this nigga. But at the same time, he working with the ops. For some money. After a nigga get him a deal, I'm ghost riding for him. Act like nigga got kidnapped, nigga. And this is real shit. So, um, put me in that motherfucker. The superior courts. Nigga, the little world gonna be fucked up. Or at least as we know it, our country. Because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't have that experience. You feel what I'm saying? And I've been through a hell of a lot. But I don't got the experience to be there. All these niggas want what the next motherfucking guy earn it, nigga. You see what I'm saying? Real talk. Motherfuckers need to earn your spot. Not knock a motherfucker down to get it. Put niggas in jail. Shoot a nigga. 
And then you get the spot, and I've seen it happen so many times. Niggas get the spot, I get the money, and you lose it. And then niggas say, well, at least I had it. Nigga, you didn't really have it. You touched it. It's like I'm sitting in jail with niggas, and they, we telling our war stories. And, you know, nigga got some nigga stand on. But then you got these other motherfuckers that's talking about, yeah, nigga, I, I had this much money. And I'm like, man, you know, run that shit down. When? Before the lick or after? No, after the lick. We came up on this. So how long before they caught you? Oh, we got caught that day. Be like, damn, did y'all get away for a whole day? I mean, you know, and then get caught later that day, get to spend any money? Like, nah, did you even spend any of the money? Nah. But we had it. You ain't had shit, nigga. You ain't had shit. You just transported that shit from where you took it from to the back uh, of the police car and they little evidence bag, nigga. That's the only thing. You didn't even get to really even enjoy the money, nigga. You didn't get to spend, put, the, put no gas from that shit in your tank, nigga. So you didn't really have nothing. But... Seen so many motherfuckers rob and kill motherfuckers and then lose all the fucking money. My grandma and them all had money. You know, my, my grandfather and my grandmother on my mama's side, they stayed together. They whole lives just passed not too long ago, the 2000s. My grandfather and my grandmother on my father's side, they stayed together. They all both sides own houses and properties, apartment courts, all that, and was giving it to us. Here you go, passing that shit down like it's supposed to be done. Y'all listen to people that don't want that happening no more. You see what I'm saying? They don't want us to be able to pass shit on to our, our siblings. And like people say, y'all run that narrative. You can't take it with you. I don't want to take it with me. Can you leave it behind, though, nigga? So your kids ain't got to go through the struggle and start all over and shit? Motherfucker, I'm going to take off uh, where you lie. I'm going to pick up from where you left off. You give me one house, I should turn it into a hundred, a million. Not saying, okay, well, I have my money. I can't take it to the grave with me. Why would you want to? Greedy, stingy, nothing-ass motherfuckers? Real talk. Take it to the grave with you for what? So the next motherfucker can't have it? And, and, and have your family and your kids, if you've been talking that shit to them, have them start all over again? Come on, man. It ain't about that. They do it. Why you think why you, why you think these people we buying and renting houses from? They own lots and lands that ain't ever had property built on them. How long you think they had that? It's coming from generational wealth, homie. They got us. We want to cut off the generational wealth. And we stupid enough to play into that. I'm going to get my own. I'm going to do this by myself. I don't like that shit either. Because if a motherfucker talking about doing something by self, you going to do it all by yourself. Not live up under me. Eat the food I provide. Wear the clothes and the clothes I buy. Move around in the vehicles that I pay for. And then when somebody hands you an opportunity or opportunity presents itself, you make one little move, but you're still on my back, on my dollar, on my dime, my time, and then say, I did that by myself. No, nah, nigga, when you do it by yourself, you go get out there in these motherfucking streets, take care of yourself, and build from there. If you ain't building from there, you ain't doing shit by your motherfucking self. You don't pay for your own food, your own water, clothing, all your own necessities. You ain't doing shit by yourself. So you niggas need to get that shit out your motherfucking head. And like I'm saying, going back to that old and young shit, that's part of the fucking division. I hate to hear it. That's just like a motherfucker disrespecting the next nigga set. Saying, oh, nigga, fuck what well, well, niggas is getting real out of line with. I think some niggas, I mean, 
about building, but the only way we can really build, like when COVID hit, they had to come with a vaccination, divide, I mean, separate yourself from it or something. You see what I'm saying? Those that's infected, try to protect yourself to the best of your abilities. So sometimes when we got fucked up individuals, they need to be put the fuck down. Tell them, nigga, distance yourself or you kill the virus. You understand? You contain the virus, distance yourself from the virus, or kill the virus. And that goes for even if it's our own people. If they contaminate it, they are, they will infect you. And then it goes, it spreads that infection, even with their mouth, their thoughts. You see what I'm saying? Their thoughts can be motherfucking contaminated. They, uh, I mean, all that. So if they got fucked up thoughts and words, get them away. They pushing that old and young on, only on black folks. Man, y'all niggas is, the name my, that, that fuck with me. Y'all just too stupid to see it. Yeah, they said on the TV show with the white folks, they mad because they see, I mean, they learn that's a weapon because they know their kids kill them more often. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They got better lives and more money, but then they bored too. Then they got a lot of dark, deep secrets. And them demons is hunting some of them motherfuckers. Just to keep it 100. I ain't got nothing against all of them. The racist ones, the ones with racist backgrounds, racist traits that do racist shit. Oh, yeah, I don't like them. I don't like them. They got some nigga that come from racist places, but... They just see themselves as another human, just like us. That's they cool. But those that got that racist get down, that biasness, that um, all kind of shit, like these fake police, talking about they for the people. If our people call the police about something, you know, it ain't even our people ain't motherfucking no civilians because we ain't in no fucking military. Ain't no motherfucking gods on this motherfucking talking. Um, if, uh, if, uh, uh, innocent bystander, that's what you're going to call them. And that's just, that's the terminology for it through law. But innocent bystander, a person, a non-affiliate, it don't even matter. Even if there's a person affiliated, call the police and try to do shit the right way. Say, hey, officer, man, I was just shot at this and that. Well, did you get hit? No. Did this and that happen? No. Well, it's nothing we can do. Motherfuckers, I think, um, I, I think I, well, I know who did it. I seen the face. Well, maybe you didn't. You see what I'm saying? That's that bullshit. Somebody called about us. One of the times I fought life was uh, 2016. We had Tams. Um, they played with my motherfucking water while I'm waiting for my food. We put our order in, me and the homegirl and shit. And, um... Uh, dealing with the homie Chico, uh, Goldie, and Trey. He had just got out. Uh, well, I fought my case in 2016, but the shit happened before that. They waited 13 months later to file on me. And now I'm fighting. My bail was 150000 I didn't do nothing to nobody. 150, not 10, 20, 50. 150000 They playing with my water. They gave me a cup off somebody else's table and put ice water in it. It was breakfast time. You can see floating milk and shit. So I'm like, hey, look, man, this shit dirty as fuck. There's old milk stains and milk floating in my water. Oh, I'm sorry. They told me, this is one of the waitresses. They told me to give it to you. Okay, they want to play games with a motherfucker. But then we out here with all white folks and shit. We the only black ones and black people in it. But it's the times, though. So I'm thinking, you know, times is usually cool. Then they give me another cup. See if I get you another one. This one got a lid on it. It look cold and shit. You know, they got me. I start drinking the motherfucker. My whole girl like, nigga, quit drinking that. Like, what you talking about? Look, I see blonde pubic hair floating in the motherfucker. And the manager, bitch, she's a blonde haired bitch. There's Mexicans working there, but the manager was white people running it. So I'm like, ain't this a bitch? I go up to the thing like, hey, check this out. 
the second cup of water. It's pubic hairs in it. She like, let me see. She get it. Pour it out. So I don't see nothing. I'm like, okay, bitch. Check this out, though. I ain't even finna go there with y'all. We on some business and shit. Because I'm um, introducing my homegirl to Trady and shit. Well, I'm introducing her to Chico. And Chico going introducing her to uh, Trady. And uh, so we was out there just waiting and shit for them to touch down. So we can make this connection because she's getting down with her music. And then um, um, she said, we don't do refunds. The manager, bitch. I'm like, I don't want a refund. A refund is when... I paid for something and I received it and I wanna I don't want it no more. Y'all don't even start cooking my food. I'm saying cancel my order. She gonna look over to them motherfuckers and I say fuck them punk motherfuckers too. Cause she told them, start cooking this food. They start cooking the food. I'm like, hey man, I just said I don't want the shit. So she's like, our signs say no refunds. Hey, I haven't received shit. So I'm not asking for a refund fund. Give me my money, cancel the fucking order. And she was like, um, I can call the police, but the bitch didn't know I started recording. I'm like, oh, okay, I see where that's going. Let me let me start recording this conversation. So I do the audio record. So she called the police, and I said, yeah, call the police. So they can hear this fucking record. Oh, you're recording? Now all of a sudden, she hung up on the police. So they can, they got a call about what area. So I can see them shooting up and down the street probably like 10, 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes later. It took them that long. So I'm sitting there, I'm waiting. But then I went out to my car and I'm like, nah, if I leave, then I'm going to look like, you know, I has, you know, I, I, I am the guilty party. And oh, yeah, another thing she said, I'm calling police. I said, call them so they can hear. And then she didn't get it at first. She said, if I call them, I'm going to tell them that you, you tried to, you threatened the robbers and you try to rob us. I said, well, okay, they're going to hear the truth because I'm recording. That's when she hung up. So, long story short, police come. We sitting at the door in one of the chairs like we waiting to be seated. These motherfuckers come in, get up, get up. No, they walk, ran past us and shit. And I'm like, hey, man, we over here, man. You know, we wanted to let y'all know what's going on. Get up, shut up. I don't want to talk. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Um, Whoa, whoa. I'm like, hold on, man. Y'all been, I seen y'all, man, that shit happened like 35 minutes ago. I recorded the whole the shit. If we was doing something wrong, man, shut up. Don't talk. Put us in the car. It was summer. It was when niggas was doing that ice water challenge. You said, I'm saying we're supposed to go back over to folks' house. And, you know, she wanted to do an ice water challenge too. After we, you know, do the little meet and greet and shit. But uh, <clears throat> it was 105. They going to put us in the backseat of the police car. Me and one, her and one. And just turn the fan on, not the AC. So I'm saying, torturing, inhumane bullshit. But they supposed to be to protect and serve. But they do all this old bullshit to me and her. Then investigate. They did a, a, a on scene investigation because I'm letting them know like, we ain't try to rob shit. It was some other Mexican family in there leaving. You know that was eating at the time, and I try to get at them like, hey man, tell them. What was going on, man? Y'all heard what this was about. Man, they say I try to rob them. We don't want to be involved. What? Like, man, what kind of motherfuckers is this motherfucking shit coming to? It was like, all right, got you. You see what I'm saying? So, but I still have my recording. So when an um, on-scene investigator came with the sergeant, female sergeant, um, investigator, and he was like, was you trying to tell us? Sound like he was trying to tell us you have a recording. Yeah, man, that's what I've been trying to tell the other officer who was, you know, trying to just, you know, just treat us, mis you know, uh, manhandle us and, and treat us wrong. So he was like, let me, um, could you get that out your pocket? Yeah, man, it's, I'm handcuffed though. So it was like, man, let me um, take one of your cuffs off. Bam, I'm in the backseat still, get it. Gave him the phone. Um, let's just shut the door. You can't go nowhere. Cool. He listened. Oh, shit. Gave my phone back. I should have turned it on record again. I didn't. I fucked up. So, um, he was like, all right, you know what? Let me go and check out their surveillance camera. They come out with my money and a receipt. Sorry about that, man. So the sergeant lady told me, sue him. 
I'm like, she said, I wouldn't ever eat here again. I tell all my people what they did. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that. Thank you. The fool, the first one on the scene, he come over there like, hey, look, don't try to sue him. Because if you do, I'm going to get in trouble. You need to be killed. Real talk. That nigga need to be killed. But he like, I'm going to get in trouble. But if you, you know, I'm going to say, man, nigga, if you about the law, you're going to do what's right then. We got done wrong. Nigga, you need to make it right. Make amends to this shit. But he was... Don't deal with it. Don't fuck with it. I'm telling you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He was like, well, he came back to the car. He shut the door. He came back. You know, to cover my own ass, that's what I'm going to do. If you if you leave it alone, don't go get an incident report or nothing. Because I was telling him, no, I'm going to sue them. I ain't going to mention you. But it was like, still going to come back on me. So he was like, this is what I got to do to cover my own ass. I'm going to leave a note attached to it. So once that file get put, it's going to be a note attached sent to the district attorney's office. And once the DA read what I have to say, you're going to jail for a long time. I'm like, nigga, whatever. This was in May. Now, my birthday in June. So for my birthday, a few folks come over. Me and wife be like, come on, let's slide out there. And go get that motherfucking police report and shit. Fuck these motherfuckers. So we slide out there, get the report. And, and, and the lady, the window, the clerk, whatever, she give them the thing. And then she stopped and she sliding it under. Like, hold on. I'm like, wait a minute. Is it a note attached to the, uh, for the DA? Yeah, I've never seen this before. But I have to support my fellow officers. Like, what the fuck? Man, you know this shit ain't right. She was like, yeah, but I mean, you know, we are all as one. Okay. So then you tell a motherfucker when they gang members or somebody else like that, no, you don't go down for your partner. Y'all supposed to be leading by example. Y'all been setting a bad fucking example since day fucking one since the fucking police was formed because really they were slave catchers. Racist motherfuckers. That Juneteenth shit coming up right now, or I mean Juneteenth, not Juneteenth, that Black Friday, that's a time when motherfuckers was Slaves was on sale. Black Friday. They had deals. Niggas go out and spend money for their day. We so stupid. But yeah, go back to this shit. Um, so I'm like, all right. So I just kept checking, kept tapping in, see if they filed some charges against me. So I go down there to the courts. A whole year went by, nothing. 13 months later, this is June of... The following year, some bullshit go on with our folks and shit. My son involved and shit. And this nigga talking about niggas trying to pack him out. So I'll go get at motherfuckers and a lot of shit going on. This niggas all up and down the street fighting. And next thing you know, police pull up. I'm like, man, what's up, man? It was like, man, what's up? Something. So I'm like, man, if ain't good, we, 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 we dispersing the crowd, man. Drove up. All right, whoa. Come back. You, come here. Me? Yeah. What you want me for, man? I'm out here and I got my little son. I think he was like, um, at the time, like six, seven. Nigga, five star. That's who he is now and shit, the artist. Um, so I'm like, man, I ain't gonna leave my motherfucking son out here and shit. They ain't, they ain't no, no supervision. We don't live over here, man. We was at the park and at the folks house around the corner. And like, bam. Come here, man. Man, they cuffed me up. I'm calling all kind of bitches and all kind of shit. And they're like, man, got a warrant for your arrest. I'm like, got a warrant? What the fuck is you talking about? Get down there, though. It's for the shit that happened that time. But at the same time, the homie, he tell me, uh, when I get out, when I bail out, I'll slide back around there. He's like, man, why you over here, man? And I'm like, shit, finna get this trailer. We can go get this money and shit. Gotta pick up some cars and shit. And he like, uh, you know it was somebody right here. I was standing here. Somebody right here that called the police. I mean, they told the police to arrest you. I'm like, I had a feeling. You see what I'm saying? Because, you know, when I said we dispersed in the crowd, it was like, it's good. And a motherfucker was basically... Helping the person who supposedly, he didn't say the person's name, but 
nigga made a gesture to who it was that told him to arrest me. But he told me, don't help get, get them niggas off my block. All right. All of a sudden, somebody told the police to come back over there and, and arrest me. They didn't even know I had a warrant until he told them to come get me. When they got me and cuffed me, they ran my name. Then, oh, you got a warrant for your arrest. All right. So, I don't, you know, niggas, that's how some niggas work. They get in some shit. They finna feed you to the wolves and shit. You see what I'm saying? But without proof, nigga don't, nigga don't move on suggesting because there was a few people over there and shit. You know, it was a lot, really. You feel what I'm saying? Niggas already came, walked from the park on the block, so it was a lot. But who would have told them to come get me? Especially um, days later. Well, I felt out, like, yeah, days later, and I'm over there a week later. Um, the homie like, bam, somebody over here. And uh, we know all them other people from that block. I mean, that uh, came from the park. Don't be on that block. Don't live over there. So, you know, um, same thing. That, that, that division shit, that divide and conquer shit. Niggas is working for these other people. But, uh, if I could have sued them, and I was going to sue them, but the police jumped in. So now I'm fighting life, Joe. My bill was 150000 I was fighting twenty five because I got the strikes and shit like that. Um, got black attorney. He really didn't want, I'm like, man, I still got my record, but I'm like, go look at the record. And that's what they released me on mine and that. It was like, they deleted the, uh, so what evidence do they have? They didn't have no evidence and I got my shit. So I'm still free again. You said I'm saying, and then was back up in the courts. I'll say, um, maybe three, three years, three, four years ago. Yeah. You said I'm saying fighting it again. But up and still behind our people and all this fuckery and a non-support. You see what I'm saying? But go back to, man, y'all stop being jealous of each other, homie. Um, well, we need to stop all this me versus you. I need your help, that fake help. You got enough money to go buy your shit, get high off of. Enough money to go put your new rims and shit on your car beat. But you don't have enough money to get your get off get on your feet for real. You don't look good, but you ain't doing good. That's that's that that's that bullshit, man. Then you go to the next nigga, man. You got it, my nigga. Can I ball? Help me out. Help you do what? Try to try to compete with the next nigga? Or you want some help starting your own business? When I started my shit, a lot of people left the nigga alone. And I'm, I'm looking out for motherfuckers. Started my own car dealership. Started wholesale and went retail. Then added DMV service. And got licensed and bonded to do VIN verifications. And we stepping it up. Now we doing boat and jet ski rentals and shit. Nobody ain't giving me no motherfucking money. Niggas wouldn't even help me. I got video footage I'll probably post later. And it's some of, us, uh, 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 of it is up there. When... I first got my motherfucking shop and got my dealer license. I'm damn near one of the only motherfuckers by myself, my kids and shit, my little boys and shit with a nigga, my boy with me. Helping, trying to help out, clean the motherfucker up and get it ready. Because we had to go through inspections to get your license and, you know, uh, the, the, the fire department got to come out and shit, check for the electrical, all that shit. Before the city even get your permits and shit. And then, you know, all that got to be done before you can go to the, um, you know, get your, your license from the state. So, nigga did all that. But motherfuckers didn't even help a nigga. But then when a nigga get open, hey, my nigga, can I, can I? Nigga, where the fuck was you at when I was trying to build? Niggas should have just said, man, I didn't want you to succeed, my nigga, but we couldn't stop you. I heard one motherfucker say something like that. I'm um, like, damn, my nigga. Just like they say, if you can't beat them, join them. Like, I couldn't stop you, so shit. I had to sit back and watch it go. What the fuck you want to stop a nigga for? You ain't sitting there stopping them when they start building these new houses or remodeling these houses on the block. And then niggas call shit. Nigga, my hood. My this, that. And like niggas say, which is true, nigga don't even own nothing there. When the, the houses and shit that we did own in the 50s, because that's where my mom's mama and daddy from, 
My pops, daddy and my, my whole family, they all fired oses and shit. I'm from the hundreds, though. I'm from Latin Dose. But I still groove with, nigga, I groove with them all. But my family, the nephews. And um, it was a lot more ownership down there than I ever seen. More family orientated and shit. That's why the, the wave was different. You see what I'm saying? And nigga love and respect that. I'm saying that's my family at the same time. But then at the same time, Family line motherfuckers up when they killed my cousin Wolf. And I found out through my daddy. It was killing me at the same time, but I mean, shit. I didn't even know. He, he didn't even have to say nothing. I would have still been thinking it was some ops. Because we were supposed to meet up and through listening to some Biggie and Tupac on the way to Santa Monica Pier. And I stayed in Vegas at the time. Bitches got to talking shit. About um, play Tupac, fuck Biggie, all this old boy shit. I'm like, what the fuck you talking about? Nigga, both of them got good music. I don't get into this little childish ass, nothing ass bullshit. Y'all in my shit. Bitch, you don't like what I'm playing? Get the fuck out. So when I'm trying to change a nigga shit, you already know how that go. Bitch, don't touch my shit like you punking somebody in this motherfucker. Here we go, bam, quick back in. Bitch, you got me fucked up. Pulled inside Santa Monica Pier parking lot. Well, get the fuck up out this motherfucker, bitch. Then my sister, she run over there. So she run over there. Boom! Back to in this bitch. Then the other bitch sister ran over there. Grabbed her by her collar. She had one of them zip-up uh, sweat jackets, so that shit cut her. I don't give a fuck. Y'all motherfuckers came at me with this. Nigga, I'm not. I don't start shit, but I ain't turning nothing down if a nigga don't have to. I can walk away and come back tomorrow and fuck you all for fucking with me. It's done. But spare the moment, I'm going to defend myself. So a white man, he run over there and shit. You said I'm saying? Because we parked in the parking lot not too far from where they had the, uh, where, where, where the, where the board wall. I mean, where the um, Ferris wheels and all that old shit at, where the arcades. And they had one of them little, um, I think, a, a pump machine, some boards. Somebody snatched a board off a gate. So I'm finna get at him. Nigga, you can't swing that fast enough to fuck with me. And that one nigga, I'ma block that and beat you till you wish you wasn't born. But he come over there trying to say the females and they pack him out. So now I just had to start laughing. I'm like, damn. They pack him out. We getting into it about a Biggie Tupac song. They both rest in peace, which was dumb shit. They pack him out. We walking to the motherfucking pier. You see what I'm saying? We walking to the pier laughing. Police run, lay me down in the sand and shit. Take me to jail. I ain't this a bitch. So I call my cousin Wolf. He like, nigga, what is you doing? In jail, nigga, I got your money. I got this 250000 nigga, and got this. And you supposed to be, uh, I'm supposed to be snatching you a house in Vegas. And nigga, I told you, I'm going to go ahead and, um, Put your, uh, that down payment I'm putting is yours. You don't owe me nothing back. And I got your cash, nigga. Why are you going to jail? I'm like, nigga, I don't know, nigga. It was crazy. I said about a Biggie and Tupac song. So they transported from the Santa Monica um, jail to L.A. County and shit. And, um, thing that probably how I missed the murder getting killed was that he called, I mean, you know, he was like, what you need me to do? Put the house up or something? Put my house up? And I'm like, nah, I got my bail money on me. I just need six more hundred dollars. I mean, I'll be needing motherfuckers to, uh, ooh, go bail me out. And, nigga, we get money, and then you should be able to bail yourself out. But I was only 600 short. Because, you know, nigga wasn't riding, expecting this kind of shit to go on. So, um, I was 600 short. And, um, he put the 600 up. And I'm like, I'm going to holler at you as soon as they pro process out. But they didn't let me process out from Santa Monica. I had to go to L.A. County. So I go to L.A. County. I think it was around Thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, it was. So I process out from L.A. County. Like I said, I live in Vegas. So um, the bitches, my sister and them, they must have slid in my car and shit. Because, you know, I parked in the parking lot. And they didn't let me go get my car. They don't do that. They don't take your car when you go. They leave it right where the fuck it's at. Hopefully they get impound, they get more money. But um, they took my car. 
And um, so I go to um, L.A. County. As I'm processing out, all my clothes and shit is gone. So I'm like, man, what the motherfucker, my motherfucking clothes, man. So we went, they went through it again and again. They even let me go in the laundry, hitting the buttons, because it looked like you're in the cleaners. Zzz, going around, go your ticket number. Man, my clothes is gone. And I just came from Chicago. I used to live in Chicago. So I had a, a double or triple down uh goose, a, a triple down goose coat and shit. Real thick and shit. Nice. Heavy as a motherfucker. When you can Zip up, and elastic in the inside, so the air don't blow up your shit, and, you know, on the sleeves. But I had that motherfucker on. I had my chains, my pieces and shit, and everything was gone. So I'm like, man, I'm not going home without my shit. So they was like, all right, you don't want to go home. Take it back. Get in that line. Take it back upstairs. No problem. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nigga that county jail don't bother me. I was damn near born in that motherfucker. Matter of fact, shit, when my mama was pregnant with me, she was in jail. You see what I'm saying? I grew up in that motherfucker. Not ever on no punk shit. Not all. We don't even, nigga, we politics against that shit. Nigga, get them niggas out of our building. Real talk. Niggas will tell you when I was in Susanville, when they made me the rep. Soon as, come tell niggas, I don't want the rep, nigga. I come from YA. I don't want that rep car, nigga. Because I politic difference. I'm a YA baby. Gave me the rep card as soon as they locked that door. Told niggas, put y'all boots on. Niggas put their boots on. What's up, dude? Then the SA homie Smokey like, what's up, dude? What's going on? I'm like, nah, nigga, what's going on, man? You know, you the homie. You see what I'm saying? Me and Smokey, we was, we was dogs. And I'm like, but what it is, man, we're going to have to get these motherfuckers up out of our building, homie. What, what happened? Nah, if I'm the rep, I don't want my motherfucking homies. And nobody else thinking, I'm cool with this type of get out. And then, you know, they're going to be folks look at you, too, like you condoning this type shit. Oh, yeah, I feel you, huh? He was like, man, go down, man. Let's do it like this. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So I'm like, look, everybody that's with this shit, roll your shit up. Hold the flag out the T-shirt out the window. Tell me y'all got to get up out this building. Anybody that won't, don't want to go, we putting you out. Period. They did they shit. Got up out of there. So, come back to, look at that jail. Shit don't bother me. I used to like to be a free floater in that motherfucker. We rack our cells with the books. And we run around and hide in people's cells. When they do a movement, going to wayside and shit like that, they can't find us. Man, we hiding in cells on different floors and all that old shit so we can stay at the L.A. County Jail, even though it was towed up dirty, but that was close. I didn't get my motherfucking visits and shit. Instead of going way out by Magic Mountain the Wayside and shit. You feel what I'm saying? And then got more phone action. We had the phones in our cells and shit. So, they went tripping. But, uh, so he told me, go back upstairs. Nigga, I'm going to go back upstairs. Hours later, call me out again. Okay, they must have found my clothes. Come back down. They don't have my clothes, my, my pieces, my wallet, nothing. I'm like, man, fuck that. Here, just fill out this report right here for your missing items. Say the value. Man, I want my shit. Y'all ain't gonna give me, y'all ain't gonna pay me for my shit. They ain't never still ain't pay me for that shit. But, um, so I'm like, it's raining. I'm like, so what I'm supposed to go home in, homie? My shoes, everything gone. Get something out that, um, dirty clothes, um, the bucket, the little cart, the dirty clothes cart. Man, I'm not wearing that shit. Fuck it. Uh, looked around, seen some fresh blues. Nigga, I'm putting that shit on. It fit better than this. This look brand new. You leave out of here, that's what they told me. You leave out of here with our county clothes on, we gonna charge you stealing county property. Who y'all gonna charge with stealing my fucking property? Look, man, this uh, you want you want you want to get charged with something else? What you gonna charge me for? Cause y'all stole my shit. I can speak, man. I'm free. I built the fuck out, homie. They're like you always a problem when you're in here. Bam, 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 bam. Well, this the system is about problem people. So I'm like, man, I just want my clothes, homie. They was like, man, get something off the court, or. You go home like that. I'm like, fuck it, I'll go home like this. 
Then uh, and I'm acting like I'm finna walk out like this. I mean, with just uh, I take they shit off. I still have my t-shirt and boxes, cause you know we had that, and um, just wash your shit. So I'm like, I'm gonna I'm I'm leave out with this. You go out like that, we're gonna get you felony, de uh, de an indecent exposure. So this is just a whole fucking game to knock, to keep knocking us down, taking from motherfuckers, and put us in situations where we have to commit crimes and do dumbass shit. So. I'm like, fuck it, man. I grabbed something out the cart. You see what I'm saying? Only time a nigga ever wore that little bullshit ass skinny jeans that they, they got motherfuckers thinking that's cool to wear, but they wasn't skinny jeans. It was somebody else's clothes that was just too small, but it was the only thing that really wasn't stinking in that motherfucking cart. So I put that shit on, low ass shirt, socks. I ain't even had no shoes on. They wouldn't even let me leave off of no county uh, the, uh, shower shoes or nothing. So I'm out in the rain, barefooted, jumped in a taxi, went back to the 50s, went to my G-Mine's house on 57th and shit. And, um, thinking, you know, bam, all right, back home, you know, ho um, holler at my motherfucking cousin and shit. And I'm waiting to holler at him. So his wife called. Have you heard from, from Kevin? But his name Wolf, Wolf Rap from the Fall, H-I-P. But I'm like, yeah, not too long ago when he put the money on my bill, you know I've been in the county jail, so you know we ain't talk. But I know him and her ain't really got along that good. And he used to tell me and shit when they just got their house in Gardena and shit after, you know, he had just got back out and I just came from Chicago. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm in Vegas now and shit, me and the gang of the homies. Yeah, he the one actually put us in Vegas and shit. So, uh... We get to the house, his house and shit. They got two separate rooms. They just got that house. So he tell me the story why he don't sleep in the same room with her. That, you know, when they had kidnapped him before and tried to get his motherfucking money, they where they got the money, they tried to kill him. Well, they got some of the money. And they was going to kill him. They took him down there by UCLA, by where my uh, grandmother on my father's side uh, worked. She was a doctor and, and head chef for the um, UCLA but they took her over there, took him over there by that 7 Eleven and shit. And um, they had him hog tied for to try to kill him. But the police just happened to pull up to 7 Eleven. And see, see, they headlights reflected their images on the wall. And they got out, creeped back there. He was hog tied. Some of the so called homies that did that. So he didn't press charges. He aced at them niggas. So he got, he went to jail. I think he did like 14. Gave him more than that, but he was still getting half time. So he get at these niggas on some payback type shit. But then he still go to jail. You know, the court system, they don't want niggas getting revenge. They don't give a fuck. You know, because they just, you know, one, one, you know, one knock one down, we put one in the cell. It don't matter either way it go. They, you know, it's against us. But we so stupid, keep going back to this. This is what this whole conversation is about. The whole system is against us, and we working against us. Our goddamn selves, man. And then we sit there, niggas, just like, man, glorify this shit. Because you niggas is just so much losers. We don't even feel like we can, some of us don't, feel like we can do a little better and be bigger than just some a internet celebrity or, 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 or a drill rapper. You see what I'm saying? Because really, the society ain't listening to the shit. You're just getting attention. A lot of you niggas is just want attention, man. So, but I'm talking on this shit for uh, on, on factual shit. And like niggas saying, the paperwork, we got paperwork and facts to everything I just talked about. And it still ain't done. So when his wife called, so I'm kind of hot that she called and asked me this. So now I'm thinking, man, what the fuck if she called and asked him that? And see, he get out, you know, everybody got their cell phones now. But he still wanted his original pager. And he still had it. And he kept his chain. So, uh, he always kept that pager. He activated the pager back. He was, I think he was the only person I know that still, well, I don't know, but the only person I know of that still had a pager and shit. So, um, uh, he, uh, he, uh, um, oh, so she was like, you know, um, something, I was like, she said, no, he was supposed to be headed down your way, come over there by your, uh, your people's house and stuff 
you know, over in the 50s. I like, yeah, you know, I talked to him. He was coming over to drop off, you know, that that uh, $600 on my bill. But um, I hear from him soon because we got some shit lined up. And, you know, I'm supposed to um, go buy my house in Vegas and shit, get my money and pick up everything else, and we're going to go from there. And, um, but now, um, who hit me next? Matter of fact, um, they say my auntie sent the Coke Dog and the other homie over there, Coke Dog, rest in peace, little dog, um, to tell me he missing. Like, he missing. I think he's gonna declare this nigga missing. So now I know something's up, man. Something ain't right. This nigga move by self with motherfuckers, but he don't check in nobody. Nobody don't know when he coming or going. But his wife called within hours. So now I'm up. I ain't really got my sleep because I'm in the county, from the county jail, from, you know, uh, Santa Monica jail to the county jail. Just got out. I want to give me some rest before we start the mission and shit. But then I jump on the phone. I'm calling around. I'm trying to call his pager, his phone. I ain't getting in touch with him. Now I call the county jail a couple of times and shit because I know they can check all the jail systems. Like he not in here. He not in here. So I still just keep calling. He ain't there yet. And then um, it's a black lady. She was cool. She called. I mean, um, I called and she answered. And she was like, uh, baby, then you just get out of here? Because, you know, because she asked me my name, who am I? And I'm telling him, my cousin, he missing. He just put something on my bill. What's happening? He ain't in there. I know the only place he'd be is in jail. So, um, I'm like, only place he can be is in jail. So she was like, uh, you know what? I checked around for you because you sound real concerned and you just left and you call. I ain't ever know nobody keep calling here. I'm like, I know he got to be in the system. She was like, well, he not in the system. I can tell you that much. So I made some phone calls. She was like, I'm going to tell you two places to check. So I'm like, all right, what's the two? She said, the hospitals. I'm like, okay, okay, I didn't think about that one. And she said, I don't want to say the other one. I still ain't thinking about that one. And so I'm like, what's the other one? Call the mortuary. And you know, they sisters hooked together. Call this number. I'm like, what? Call the hospital. I ain't thinking about calling the mortuary. No. Call the mortuary. Yeah, we got him at Angela's funeral home. Motherfucker, that nigga just bailed me the fuck out. How? You see what I'm saying? So, um, even, let me see. Before then, when I'm talking to his wife, I'm saying, suspicion. A nigga already had the suspicion when I'm talking to his wife because she called asking her if I've seen him. So, she didn't know. What I was doing while I'm talking to her, I, like I said, I called his phone, his pager. I heard his pager. I was like, ain't that Wolf pager? Well, let me see. Oh, yeah. That nigga don't go nowhere without that pager. She was like, uh, well, he left it here. Oh, now go back to how she, he didn't fuck with her. I skipped some. When I said niggas kidnapped him the first time, she worked at LP. You see what I'm saying? And he was, a, he was a teenager at the time. But he was already a millionaire and shit. You see what I'm saying? One of the freeway boys and shit. Uh, so, because the picture we buried him with, he was 19. Took his, uh, on like the mural for the picture was taking a picture in front of his mansion in Beverly Hills at 19. But, um, so, uh, she was a, a um, she was a, a, a Counselor. Yeah, she was a counselor at LP. So um, they they slid her up under him to watch him, fuck with him. She got pregnant by the nigga while he was still up in there. You see what I'm saying? And um, so he, he finally, you know, ran all that down to me. So I did know. So I can't say if I would have known. But it was like nobody can do nothing to her. 
you know, uh, I fuck with her because of my daughter. You know, it's my only kid. You see what I'm saying? And I didn't, I didn't even know until later. That's what he was telling me. But he was like, I love my daughter, but I know the truth on her. Just that, this. So, I, that's why, I, let me hit this nigga pager. I hear his pager. Now, she making excuses. Oh, he left it. That nigga don't leave that pager. He told me he ain't going nowhere without that pager. We on missions. We in Vegas, different places. That nigga love that pager. Um, I hear somebody at the back door. She 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 think nigga stupid. You forgot when y'all got the house, our whole family, we own property from both sides. So we used to have the little kids. We up on the roofs, redoing roofs. We up in there putting carpet in, everything. So we was groom, groom, groomed and grown as real men. You see what I'm saying? So she was like, how you know that's the back door? Bitch, only the back door got a bar door on it. The front ain't even got no bar door on it yet. We ain't got, we ain't put that up. Only the back door. And what if somebody, oh, that's the people uh, coming to pick up the shampoo. Why would they be picking up the shampoo this late at night? You see what I'm saying? And that ain't making no sense. They picking up the shampoo right now. And why would they go to your back door? I don't know. Let me go um, find out. I say, hold on, hold on. Y'all got a rock waller back there. The shampoo people, where they get through y'all back gate and go to y'all back door for the shampoo? And then you questioning, how do I know that's the back door? You got a bar door on the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, y'all are here. You, um, you is with everybody else helping them. Um, yeah, I'm there. You don't be there. We always there. We the ones putting that house together for y'all. Wolf help us. Me, Wolf, my uncles, my pops, and them and shit. It's all family. We, you know, getting this shit together. So, um, then when I call, do all this and that. So then we hear the story. Well, first, um, that's when. My uncle them come over, uncle dog them like bad bad, you know, we missing and shit. And then that's when, you know, we find, you know, I call, find him at the mortuary, and help the lady from the county jail. She was a black female, big respect, props to her. So my pops and them come over my grandfather and grandmama house. On my mama's side, it's on 57th, between Vermont and Hoover. So, um, I'm mad, I'm crying and shit, I'm kill motherfuckers. I'm just like, man, he was like, leave it alone. I'm like, what you say, nigga? And my mom started behind him, she's in her eyes. I'm like, spent on a nigga, what you say? So he like, leave it alone, man. For fuck you mean, leave it alone, nigga? That was my cousin, nigga. And that was your nephew, not my mama's nigga, your nephew, nigga. And he was like, they was gonna kill you too. No, my mom started behind him doing like this. Stop, like, stop. Listen, listen. So she knew, too. She was like, listen, listen. She was like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to listen so I can get this info I need so I can know how to move. Then he was like, um, leave it alone because they was going to kill you, too. You just happened to get lucky and go to jail last night. I got lucky and went to jail. Call that luck, nigga? Nigga, man, I'm from the trip. And, she, oh, and then she was like, kept doing this. Listen what he got to say. I'm like, uh, what they kill him for? That nigga is cool. Look out for everybody. Because y'all having all that money. Ain't taking care of the rest of the family. So I flashed immediately. Bitch ass nigga and I never even tripped on pops. Nigga ain't ever been in a nigga life. My mama moved out when I was 14, man. You see what I'm saying? She moved out when I was 14. My daddy ain't never lived in the house with us. My sister Gwen, rest in peace, the one they killed the hospital on an accident somehow, whatever. Um, moved in, moved back in, was taking care of me and my sister and shit. And my sister, two little kids and shit. My two nieces. But um, then I got ran out by a car. I was telling y'all some of this on something else. And, um, Paralyzed on the left side, just temporarily and shit. 
It was a triple-A worker at the triple-A building who did it. I guess he was mad about something. He came from the back. Boom. Fuck me up. Me and the homie Tiny Doom, we in Inglewood on um, La Brea, close to uh, Hazel and shit. And, um, but, Moms wanted that settlement money. So I'm letting her know, me catching the bus, because I had a car. Nigga can drive any day. She wanted me to just look hurt. So she wanted me on the bus, on crutches. Now I had to go through IVC from Imperial in Vermont to the IVCs, and they start threatening the nigga. You see what I'm saying? And talking about now, nigga, you can walk. We're going to do this and that to you. You are right now, little nigga. Whoop, whoop, stop coming through our hood, this, that, this. So I'm telling moms, I'm going to have to drive because these niggas is threatening. They're going to kill me. Well, I'm going to kill you if you don't go, nigga. I'm like, I already know the therapy. They told me what to do. I'm back walking. I'm good. I can take care of myself. I know how to do the therapy at home. No, you're going to go. Whoop, 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 whoop. Long story short, the while, you know, I was even catching the bus towards Hawthorne and walking back on the other side of the street. Them niggas is in the car. They follow. They say, nigga, we knew you was on the bus, nigga. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, it was the last warning. We gonna kill you, little nigga. They was like, how old is you? I was 13, 14. So, mom, like I said, she didn't even let her. She stayed off of 80 something and shit. Uh, Western over there, right across the street for Latasha Harlan got killed and shit by the Asian lady and shit. So, um, I was at Florence. Florence, I believe Florence. Yeah, I think around Florence. I can't remember. But um, what I'm letting them know, I ain't going to that motherfucker no more. Fuck that. So, stop going. She was mad as a motherfucker. I get a call from my lawyer. And that nigga like, um, how you enjoying your money? I'm like, what money? I'm dumbfounded to this shit. What money? I had a feeling you didn't get it, man. That's why I called you. Your mom insisted that I put the money in her name, the check in her name. I'm like, man, my mama don't even live with us, man. My mama on drugs. You see what I'm saying? She fuck with that crack. Man, you sent the money to her? I was like, yeah, that's your mom. She told me to do it. So I call her like, bam. And I remember the, the lawyer name, Larry Berger. I'm like, Mr. Berger called. And he got the Mr. Berger called. Well, fuck it. Mr. Berger called and asked me how I'm enjoying my money. He told me he sent you my settlement check. That's why you was insisting that I went on down to this motherfucking therapist. Even though these niggas is threatening to kill me. Um, uh, you said, oh, bam, if you don't, you're going to kill me. And I found out, oh, yeah, life insurance policy on us. So it didn't matter. It was going to be win-win for you. So uh, a little bit later, so I'm going to, um, then I was going to Cooper at the time. Yeah, Cooper Continuation. I come home, I see my folks, moms and my folks named Jimmy and shit. I seen his van, so I already knew. I'm like, oh, that's Jimmy and them. They over here. What's happening? So I go in the house. What's up? And she was like, oh, you got to go to court. I go to court. I ain't even been arrested yet in my life. Real talk. Not even in the um, police station yet. So I'm like, the court for what? I don't know. They told me to bring you down there. Miles is mad because I know about the motherfucking settlement money and the insurance policy she had on me. So she, I go to court. She got me a judge during court. No, yeah. And she declaimed, she deemed me a menace to society with no fucked up background. Yeah, I, I fights. She raises us to fight. She used to make us fight motherfuckers. When I'm in junior, I mean, elementary, first, second grade, I had to fight motherfuckers in junior high school. She said, win or lose, as long as you stand up and fight them, nigga. Or I'm going to fuck you up. My mom was an abusive motherfucker. And it didn't, it didn't bother me because it made a beast out of a motherfucker. You want to throw cut? Came from Pop's uh, girlfriend and shit. But mom said, oh, you fell off the bike with uh, Cousin Trina. No, I remember when the uh, my Pop's bitch, we, I'm at Pop's house and shit, spending the night when I was littler. She kicked me out the bed into one of the mirrors they had, you know, back in the days when people had that bullshit when they doing bad, uh, big long mirrors, the closet mirror, standing up on the side of the, uh, on the wall. So she kicked me into that motherfucker. Okay, cool. So, um, kicked me into that motherfucker. 
Well, you know, cut my shit. I remember going to the hospital, all that shit, the stitches. But, um, so, mom's put me, helped me put in, the, in that system. So when I did beat up that undercover police, that just added to what mom's was saying. First, they had locked me up. My lawyer asked, why is all this going on? But I got to save that for another talk. We're going back to my cousin Wolf now. So I was just showing all this family shit, nigga, this division. It's there, my nigga. So when they killed my cousin Wolf was supposed to kill me that night, my pops was telling me, you lucky. They was going to kill you too. When I said why, he was like, y'all having this money and really Wolf and they taking care of the family. So I flashed and said, nigga, our, my grandfather and grandmother now give all y'all, y'all own apartment complexes and houses. Y'all took loans and shit out on the motherfuckers and lost that. How much more do y'all want from motherfuckers? Then y'all all migrate back to motherfucking grandma and grandpa's house. So my grandfather passed first. You see what I'm saying? But they all there. You see what I'm saying? They always over there, face stinking and all that shit, laying on her couch. And so she was telling me, I don't, she don't want them there. She want her house back. Then, um, um, Now I go to, I'm like, okay, so why they was going to kill me? Because who I am, the way I'm getting down right now. It's because, I said, nigga, oh, I ain't even been out here. I've been in jail most of my life. Most of my adult, from my teenage life, most of my adult life until now. I'm on the run right now. Just came back from Chicago, but I see we had the little plugs get different. I had different names, so I had to go back to court on all that. I ain't, I ain't doing shit when I had my high-speed chase, 01. They hit me for all my alias names. Um, I did time for uh, Las Vegas. But my lawyer had paid lawyer, even though he was fucked up. Ran my time concurrent with Nevada, California, and all that old shit. Fought life. I'm going to beat the life because my lawyer was a racist and shit. So the DA said that's going to be automatic mistrial for insufficient counseling during the trial. So they offered me the 32 with 80. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, bam, I already been fighting this case in here for 16 months. But now, so I ain't worried about, you know, saying, you know, I was I was on the run. But I was on the run at that time and shit. And um, so I'm like, what niggas got against me? I don't owe motherfuckers nothing. Nobody did nothing for me and said, because the, uh, the way you are now, you're always trying to help everybody. So I'm like, wait a minute, we family. I don't supposed to be trying to help people, our people. It was like, that's just it, man. Regardless, I was just you asked why you know you was gonna get killed too, but the shit is done. Everybody got what they want, so leave it alone. So I'm like, nigga, fuck that, nigga. The fuck is you talking about? Leave it alone, nigga. And niggas, y'all, you let me know y'all was gonna kill me too. You see what I'm saying? Y'all killed my motherfucking cousin, nigga, my best friend, nigga. And then tell him he was going to kill me too for being a real one? Niggas, you serious? So, moms, and then, you know, my grandma, so I respect my grandma's, grandpa's house, grandpa's on my mom's side. He passed it this time too. So, you know, well, grandma's, they keep their shit immaculately clean, always cooking, got something on the stove, beans cooking, and then got the vegetables and stuff, and then they do the meat. But I'm just saying, I mean, keep the shit speaking span. Big house, and, you know, I think five-bedroom house. and uh, So, nigga not going there causing no havoc. But I'm like letting nigga know, nigga, I want to holler at you too, man. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, this shit ain't, ain't letting shit go. I'm going to do my homework, find out who's all has to do with what. Then nigga is going to be handled accordingly. Then a couple of folks pass, assuming I did it. Nope. What I'm telling motherfuckers is, I'm going to let motherfuckers know the truth about what happened. And those are loved ones, the motherfuckers that's going to ride for them. I only going to say, go do nothing to nobody. I'm just letting motherfuckers know the truth. And you take the truth and you run with it, however, whatever direction you want to go. And that's it. But, niggas going to kill me, they said, because niggas, wasn't, they, wasn't, they knew they wasn't going to be able to kill him with you there. And get away with it. So you was had to go too. But you got lucky. So just be happy you still alive. I'm like, alright, nigga. Got that. 
We're going to deal with that. Then I hear the story about uh, his wife was saying he left in her car. But when the police found him off of going, um, because they stayed in um, Gardena, and Hoover go all the way down there to their house, right off of Hoover. So they got him on Hoover and, I think, uh, Hoover and uh, 120th, somewhere right there. On the bike, he started riding in front of the police on around on circle on his daughter's bike, though. Put his pants down. He said he started shitting, throwing up, whatever. Bam, passed out and died. So they 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 hit him. They laced him with something. Probably had him with some motherfucking heroin or something. He don't do no drugs, none of that shit. But you know they laced him and shit. Said he had a knot on his head too. So he probably did that. Hit him with something, knocked him out. Thought he was gonna die. But what I think it was. That could have been him at the back door at the time when she was, when I had called her back and I heard the knocking at the door. That could have been him then. But she said, you know, he left in her car and she ain't heard from him. But they found him on her, on his daughter's bike. So it's like, okay, that car ain't ever been found yet either. But, um, well, I'm going to tell you what they came up on. 2.6, 2 million, 600 and some thousand that's including, well, not including my 250000 work and everything else. So motherfuckers, they ate, they, 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 they ate hearty for a minute. You said, I'm saying, I, I ain't seen, I noticed motherfuckers, so I didn't go right back to Vegas. You know, my head fucked up. I'm like, fuck this game. Fuck living life like this. I see a lot of motherfuckers around that motherfucker with you hoes and shit the same week. Niggas didn't even wait. I see the shit, but I couldn't put a stamp on making that mistake and tapping into the wrong motherfucker that didn't do nothing. You see what I'm saying? I'll be just as bad as them motherfuckers. But what I'm talking about, that's that division. And my cousin at the time, let me see, I'm like, uh, I know exactly how old I was. I was like 22. He was uh, probably like um, maybe 30. See that, that 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 age gap? It didn't make no difference. Nigga, we was like this. Me and dog, dog older than me. We was like this. That's how we work and get money. Now, mother, you old. If you're not my age, you no, know, you people that keep yelling that are miserable. And y'all mad. Y'all want what the next got. And y'all looking for a way. Let me try to tear them up like down, make them feel bad about they sales and call them old. That's just like dissing a motherfucker set, though. So sometimes when motherfuckers get to yelling that out, I think niggas need to slap the shit out of motherfuckers. When motherfuckers think they with the business, if you ain't trying to build, you trying to tear down. So if you ain't building and you yelling that, maybe a bullet to the face or to the throat and shut a motherfucker up because I still fight for my older folks. You think I'm saying? I, and that's how we was raised. Respect your elders. Like I said, grandmas, grandpops, and on both sides, they had loan money. They had property. They was passing down. Thinking we finna be calling my grandfather and grandma. Yo, oh, we don't want your houses. I mean, fuck that. You took care of us. Nah, look at us. Respect and love. They trying to stop us from doing that. Now you got motherfuckers that fucking off their mamas, the ones that don't deserve it, and they mamas and shit that do deserve it. Niggas ain't doing nothing too because she just like me, a loser, a fuck up. But uh, nigga, that old young shit, niggas need to leave that bullshit alone. You see what I'm saying? All this division, light skinned, dark skinned, fat, short hair, skinny. Everything y'all talking about is black against black losers. Nigga, get that out your mind and build. It's like I just seen something. I got my own businesses and shit. But I seen something where it's a looking uh, for a construction. Because um, when I first got out the pen, 20-something, I started my own construction company. I was just going to do the outsourcing, get the calls and seeing people I know because I know a lot of people in construction. Send them to go ahead and jump on this job, jump on that. But they talked me into, come on, my nigga, you know how to do it. You might as well do it with us. So... I just seen something the other day saying they're looking for a supervisor, but you're going to have to have paperwork 
saying you got a minimum of 10 years um, continuous experience in documentation. Now, if a nigga just 20, your mother say, nigga, I need that fuck. How you going to have 10 years documented experience at 20 years old? 21. It's not happening to get that position. So I respect what the motherfuckers is talking about. They ain't going to put anybody behind the fucking wheel of a car. Like all these niggas getting these Hellcats. Because they easy and they cheap, but they fast. And they killing. Man, I just looked. There was over 24,000 deaths already behind the motherfuckers. Whoa, I can go fast, but I don't know how to drive. Bam, bam, bam. You killing these kids and all that shit. And then nothing we're talking about. When a nigga's talking about, so yeah, I was a suicidal motherfucker. You fuck with me. We're going to take you down. I might take you with me. And if you was a fake friend or something, nigga, you be talking all that shit. Let's go, nigga. Well, I'm, we gonna, we gonna crash. We might hit a tree. We might go into the ocean. Who knows? But I was in 23 car accident, four near fatals, two. They called me in DOA. When I was, it was in Chicago. Um, shoot, we was just left the lake and shit, out in the hunnets. We just left the lake out on, um, by uh, Lake Michigan and shit. We sliding, I think it's on Lakeshore Drive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was on South Lakeshore Drive. But we out there with the GD homies just sliding. Sure, I'm in my M3 BMW 21 because I'm on the run at the time. That's before they killed my cousin. Shout out to Chicago because I was on the run because I went to the hospital to kill them motherfuckers for killing my sister. But then this bitch and my homie, he left me. I had to walk to the hospital. I still went. You know, the gate around the motherfucker fell on top of me. Um, they already know. They knew about it. Miles went in there and told them. So they said they called the police. Gave me a while to get out of there, you know, but I didn't went to jail and fight life and shit. But, um, uh, so fuck that car accident shit too. But what I'm talking about is, they got so much and so much, so, so real. Niggas be on some dumb shit, man. All that shit, niggas be trying to talk down to Chicago. My, my nigga, y'all don't even know how Chicago was structured. Chicago, y'all talking about Larry Hoover, they gonna do this, everything, man. He had big respect. The only reason he did that, you ain't going to knock this man for saying, if he said he denounced it, he said that in front of the, the world and had to say that he wanted his freedom. Because when I was out there in 95 and 96 with little niggas, they had passed that law and given him for every murder that was put in on his sentence. Like I said, though, niggas don't even know how Chicago was structured, homie. It was it was more structured when Larry Hoover was, you know, doing his shit. But like I said, I think it was 96. We all I was in Chicago on the run from the first time getting parole from YA. When I went up, like I said, went up to that hospital and was going, uh, but I had to walk. So by the time I got there, the gate, that iron gate fell on me and Time I got from under that, my thing was already there and informed the people what I was coming in there to do. So yeah, I'm mad, huh? He killed my motherfucking sister. Faked the autopsy. She was just pregnant in her tubes. She was in the room finna go home. And um they killed her. You see what I'm saying? And but uh I don't even know who I was if somebody had something to do with that. Cause then I heard just recently from one of my folks that Moms was in a room with her that day and just went in on her on some words. And then later on, they thought she was another patient, took her back there for surgery. Who knows what happened? You see what I'm saying? But, um, um, and I'm non forgiving for all this shit. Regardless of who, what, non forgiving. But, um, like I said, though, so I went to Chicago. Moms told them I was still going to go. And at the time, didn't know all what I know. So I'm tripping out. And she like, I just lost my sister. I mean, my daughter, I don't want to lose you too. And I was like, fuck that, I'm going. She was like, if you go in, they already know. They see you on cameras. I told them you out here. They said the police should be here within a few minutes. 
So if you're going, I'm going with you. I mean, you know, that time I wasn't would take motherfuckers, you know, with a motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? Especially I didn't know what I knew. If I did know, we would have still went. You see what I'm saying? Mine would have just met that faith. But, um, yeah, when they gave them all that time, because they even in, indicted a gang of police. Nigga, like gang of police was GDs, vice lords, BD, all kind of shit. It was all on the news. You see what I'm saying? They had a gang of them indicted. Police used to ride up, pull up. GD in. I'm like, that's what's happening. The folks like, GD folk, GD in, bam, bam, bam. But, you know, we had popping this shit out there. I even, I ain't from Chicago. I'm from Hoop. You know, they was asking me to be an overseer. You said what I'm saying, though? Know, was a young nigga, just 2021. 20, you said what I'm saying? But, uh, uh, yeah, 20, that was 20, 2021, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm like, no, nah, homie, I'm from Hoover. And it was like, you know, Larry Hoover, our boss. I'm like, no, I ain't from, I ain't talking about a man, Hoover. I'm from Hoover Street, homie. I fuck with y'all, you said what I'm saying? Nigga be the plug, you said what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm from Hoover, homie. It is what it is. A few California motherfuckers that was out there at the time. We was in the streets every day. You know, somebody talking about they bus passes. Niggas be on the L's, homie. You see what I'm saying? Niggas jump on that L. That's kind of like the metros. But, uh, like I said, niggas don't know how that shit was structured. So they won't fuck with him out there, homie. They love that nigga. Niggas went marching for him. He been in there since 74. All right, I'm gone.